there's a bunch of stuff happening right now in gaming. And before we do discuss some of uh, the recent stuff, I would love to get Az's thoughts because he's in our sphere. He's uh, one of the guys that is always streaming some type of game. And, and they're not all like AAA stuff, right? There, there's all sorts of different things that he's playing. So he at least has this, has this, um, he has this, let's say, I say your hand on the pulse of, of sort of what's going on with the industry. And I, I would love your perspective. You're far more tapped in than I am. Um, you know, definitely with you being uh, like streaming as much as you, you've you obviously done. But I mean, that was kind of your, would you argue, like claim to fame? De- definitely like with the Warcraft stuff, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, that's, that's what, yeah. That, that video that, game stuff I've done predominantly throughout my YouTube uh, life so right. far. Pop so, culture only came in about 2020. Exactly. So you know you you've been you've been tapped in. We're in this funky era of mm-hmm. the AAA games have um they they don't feel like AAA experiences. Let's just say that um mm-hmm. it, it it doesn't seem to be coming from yeah you get some uh, highly you know big budget stuff and oftentimes it seems more than not they are landing they they are not landing. Excuse me. So my question is what is your perspective? It's 2024. We just got the year popping off. How do you feel about the industry as a whole, as a as a gamer? Like, how how do you feel about the actual industry? Um, the Western gaming industry is is going to uh, go through a a very dark phase soon. Okay, I mean it's already going into one, but um, it's uh, it's been spared a lot of the uh, the the current day shit that we've had in other industries. <clears throat> now it's its turn. It's inevitable. And we're seeing uh, so many things that have been put into place. Companies like Sweet Baby Inc., Race Hustlers, literally come in and blackface your, your video game. Uh, we'll take Norse Mythology, we'll, we'll blackface it. Yeah. We'll take uh, characters from Alan Wake 2, uh, we'll, we'll blackface them. I got, I got such a kick out of watching you. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. Fuck that game. Um, <laughs> we we uh, they've they've been um, instrumental in the uh, suicide cucks uh, kill the justice league, <clears throat> which we are for sure going to be going uh, into. And uh, they're also responsible for a story on Spoderman Two, uh, where uh, Peter went. Uh, I'm sorry, Miles. I'm too white. Uh, please take over the franchise. And Miles Morales says, "That's cool." By the way, I'm Miles Morales. And he says, "I know." Spider-Man, pleased to meet you. Uh, so we are going through, particularly with narrative-based games, we are going through a... Uh, we're going to start going through a, a real dark patch. Um, we've seen Bethesda's announcement of the Indiana Jones game. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, coming, it's going under the, the Bethesda banner. It's Machine mm-hmm. Games that's making it. But Bethesda is the publisher, and Todd Howard's an executive producer, which means he's taking a paycheck for doing not a lot. We saw the the guy shaved hair, fucking pride t shirt, oh, pride was, uh... pins, uh, Quispin, uh, double barreled, <laughs> fucked hard name. Uh, went to private school, probably. Uh, you know, had all sorts of things stuck in his rectum, and uh, they're the people that are, are, are bringing one of the most masculine characters. Uh, well, I mean, he was one of the, I think, males. I don't want to assume it's gender, you know. True. Uh, but there was a lot of there was a lot of uh, women telling us how men are. We can't do that the other way around. Remember, mm-hmm. we're not allowed to do that the other way around. Apparently, true. We had uh, <clears throat> suicide cucks, which we're going to go into, no doubt. And then uh, the uh, CEO of uh, Rebel Wolves which is the company that's making the Witcher remake uh, for CD Projekt Red. And Rebel Wolves is made up of former CD Projekt Red staff who've left. Left, started Rebel Wolves. Um, The CEO, he worked on The Witcher 2. He worked on The Witcher 3. And he actually did a good interview about changing outdated content. But he was talking about mechanics. He was talking about gameplay. He was talking about graphics. Everything that he spoke about, he personally spoke about, was actually game-related. However, CD Projekt Red 
have come out with a video about a year or so ago that's absolutely downvoted into oblivion where it, it looks like some sort of hostage video for BlackRock uh, and Vanguard. Because Vanguard, uh, I have did a little bit of research today, Kelsapri's Vanguard of a stakehold in CD Projekt Red. Oh, well, what, what a surprise. Vanguard have, 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 have <laughs> just why on earth would they be investing in, in CG? <laughs> Uh, who who knows, man? Who knows? Who knows? Maybe they love video games, hey? Maybe, perhaps, perhaps that's all that. Big lover of video games, uh, and it, and it, and it, they just he just they just talk about ESG inclusion and diversity. So I I'm, I believe this guy. I believe this CEO from from um, Rebel Wolves. I believe that he just wants to make a really modern, not current day, modern version of the witcher as in great gameplay open world uh change the uh, mechanics tweak the mechanics uh to, to make it but i don't think cd project red because it's going to go under their publish uh under their publishing i don't think they are gonna they they are gonna come in and they are gonna modernize aka current day the social aspects of it mm. because that's all they talked about in their esg superficiality right. Social engineering, social engineering. That's all it is. So, uh, yeah, I'm a little bit nervous, uh, to say the least, about about that. Uh, it's just a really uninspiring time. Most AAA companies are just safe now. Remake, sequel, remake, annual franchise. Um, if you've seen, we'll talk about it, but if, if you've seen the monetization aspects of the Suicide Cucks, uh, it, it's it's pathetic. It's absolutely pathetic. And you got people out there um, white knighting shields up for a corporation when they just spent 70 bucks on a video game. And then they go, oh, no, it's absolutely fine that there's $11 costume microtransactions on day one to go with the battle pass. Battle pass. Oh, shut the fuck up. You know, on day one and all this nonsense. Um. Although, going back to The Witcher, just briefly going back to Witcher, one of my concerns about Rebel Wolves, though, is that uh, NetEase do have a stake in them. Mm. And NetEase, of course, being uh, NetEase and Tencent being the two big um, absolute pilers of, of microtransaction monetization dog shit into video games uh, from China. So, yeah, I... I uh, in it, from an independence sphere, that's the most exciting time for me. Okay. Um, uh, to, to look at uh, smaller companies putting stuff out, even if it's early access and they're working on it. Um, you're just finding that you're having a lot more fun with those type of games. Modern games, they're just they're AAA, I should really say. Uh, style over substance for the most part. And even half the time then, uh, most of the mechanics are broken bugs etc through the through the wazoo uh, or they could do what uh, blizzard did with diablo 4 and that was just kill their game uh by alienating or well, not alienating literally getting rid of 99 percent of the fucking player base within yeah. just a couple of months uh because they wanted to completely slow everybody down and uh just made the game an absolute chore uh that's that's where we are uh, just give me a an Eastern RPG, and I'll be a happy boy. And yeah. then Power World. This is why Power World's one of the reasons. If you ask me, one of the reasons why Power World is just absolutely gone nuts, and that's because uh, it's just fun. It's just a fun game, and that's yeah. all people want. 